In the last video, we talked about how to find the center of mass along one axis. So that's where all the masses were distributed along one axis, like the x-axis. Uh, but we know that masses are not, uh, objects are not distributed just along one x-axis always. So we also can then move this into a situation where we have objects placed in, say, a three-dimensional space. So the center of mass can be utilized in all three coordinates. So this is the x-coordinate center mass equation, this is the y-coordinate center mass equation, and this is the z-coordinate center mass equation. So we can determine the center mass. In example 13, we're trying to find the center mass in this plane. So actually they're all uh, along the x-y plane here, but we don't have to worry about the z-coordinate. So let's calculate that. We're going to calculate the x-center of mass. Um, and you could either use this nice formula here, or if you want to write it all out, that's okay. You could write it as m1x1 plus m2x2 plus m3x3 divided by the sum of the masses, m1, m2, and m3. And now we substitute in. I'm going to assume that this is m1. I'm going to assume this is m2. And then I'm going to assume this is m3. And there I substitute the masses M1 here, and M2 here, and M3 here, and you can see the numbers substituted over there. And the x-coordinates are shown here, and here, and here. As you can see, here, here, and here. And you can work it out and calculate it now. And that gets you an answer for the x-center of mass of 2 meters. And then you can do a similar thing for the y center mass. It's going to be the same equation, except you just have y's. m1, y1, m2, y2, plus m3, y3, divided by the sum of the masses. And so you can go ahead and substitute the masses, but now you're going to be using these y coordinates. And there's the substitutions. And so our y center mass has a value of 1.7 meters. Now I can locate this particular point, which is our center of mass. Notice that the center of mass for the system lied right along the two meter mark because the effect of these two masses canceled each out horizontally, and so we knew that the center of mass had to be along that axis. So you can use some symmetry and make sure that your answers do make sense. As a good follow-up or conceptual question, I would look below in your notes in here and take a look at the example, the conceptual question here. Which point do you think is it A, B, C, or D, where is the center mass for this L-shaped object? Assuming that this is all uniformly distributed mass. We'll talk about the answer in class. And that's it for this example.